Hello and welcome back to the Chaos Chuck channel. So this is the extended episode for Bourbon 1. You may have already caught the quick episode in which I kind of gave you the background and overview of uh, the cool bourbon whiskey sample box. And um, in the short episode we covered the nice packaging and the interesting subscription box concept uh, with little downside. I mean, what's not to like about different bourbons? So now we are ready to continue on for a little more detail into the individual bourbons and um, things related to that. So for um, sample A, we had a uh, few bourbon whiskey, 46.5% uh, alcohol. It had a uh, interesting flavor map. This was the one with the uh, clove component, which I was able to pick on, uh, pick up on in my own personal sampling. <clears throat> so the flavor map started with malted barley, uh, a tangy element, a charred element, and sweet. Moved on to clove, and then rye, and then caramel, caramel being rather large on the flavor map. Uh, a dry uh, symbol and element, and then cinnamon. So um, the few bourbon whiskey uh, was pretty tasty and uh, and one I enjoyed personally. Um, but aside from the clove I really didn't pick up on very much of it in terms of the flavor map. So I looked to reviews online and um, the first one I looked at was from a website called Breaking Bourbon, and um, they talked about uh, it being a little less than a four-year or a less than four-year age bourbon, 70% uh, corn, 20% northern rye, 10% two-row malt, with a deep reddish copper color, and. Um, I didn't really catch anything about the uh, the color on the flavor map, but um, you know it's uh, how to tell the difference between a caramel color and a copper color is is kind of hard to tell for me. <coughs> so uh, the review talked about where the distillery is located uh, outside of she Chicago and Evanston, Illinois, and um, comes from the initials of Francis Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ward's initials, a historical figure who made Evanston the home of Women's Christian Temperance Union. Ironically, Francis was a staunch supporter of Prohibition and was a one of many who played a part in ensuring Evanston remained dry uh, until 1972. Um, so uh, in the review, they talk about cherries, rich caramel, Season wood mingle with burnt brown sugar and other scents. Complex array of scents is wrapped in young grains and balanced with a light spicy burn. Not rough around the edges, actually quite enjoyable and not a turnoff considering how obviously young it comes off. It's a non -mix, mix of wonderfully interesting and strangely inviting yet obviously underaged. Okay, so I didn't pick up on any of that. The uh, caramel. Uh, did match the uh, the tasting map from the uh, the box. <clears throat> Moving on to the palate part of the review, they talk about big corn and spice up front. Uh, corn's not on the flavor map at all. Uh, just rye, and um, they talk about uh, more graininess and uh, taking a turn for the worse. Um, Again, bits of caramel. They talk about vanilla, which isn't in the flavor map either. And um, they uh, basically say the flavors are overpowered by grain and alcohol. Well, that's bourbon. It's supposed to have alcohol. Finish, the downhill momentum continues into the finish, they say, becoming bitter, tannic, and almost sour. Hints of oak and a light sweetness are present, but not over, but overpowered by the tannic flavors. Ends on its lowest note. Um, 
didn't dislike it that much personally, and I thought it was uh, uh, pretty tasty. Um, and uh, so that was the Breaking Bourbon review um, from uh, the whiskeyjug.com. We have another review, and um, here they talk about uh, spice and uh, cinnamon and clove. So here we got somebody that agreed with the clove. Um, anise, caramel, nutmeg, butterscotch, and resinous pine mix with citrus peels and an ambiguous sweetness. Bit of rye spice lurking about with a touch of young astringent oak. Um, <clears throat> this reviewer also talked about corn uh, dominating the initial palate, quote-unquote, and then the clove, cinnamon and caramel. So really the only thing that uh, seems to come out uh, amongst the reviewers is the caramel and the clove. Everybody else seems to vary and turn off in other directions. So um, this is part of what led me to question just how much these uh, descriptions really hold true to uh, the reality. Um, so let's move on to another one. Okay. Um, we're going to talk next about Coval, single barrel bourbon. 47% um, alcohol. Uh, a uh, map from the uh, tasting box that starts with port, tobacco, mango, small amounts of caramel and corn in terms of the uh, graphics compared to the caramel graphic in the, uh, the few has wheat, apricot, uh, this gently sweet graphic, and then finally barley. Um, personally, I, I really didn't pick up on any of those flavors. It just kind of tasted nice to me. Uh, so let's look at what some of the other reviewers had to say about the Coval. And uh, they talked about uh, this being a Chicago tra craft distiller. And um, one thing this reviewer talked about was on the first impression of the taste, uh, he compared it with Smarties candy. Um, talked about the addition of millet to corn uh, with a soft chalkiness, which uh, I don't get where you get chalk out of this, but uh, okay. And um, uh, warm tropical tart elements. And um, he compared it to like chewing on the paper that sticks to candy buttons. It leaves a pleasant powdery taste on the palate after sipping, in addition to dried fruit and pepper. Sulfur apricots come to mind last. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, I'm not picking up on any of this, and um, you know, really not a whole lot of uh, overlap between this reviewer, which is, I'm sorry, I didn't say the name of the reviewer. This is from the Whiskey Wash. Um, you know, on the new, in the nose part, uh, the smell. Um, again, they talk about. Uh, sweetness and tropical fruit, uh, melted butter, I'm, I'm not sure how you get that to uh, come out of it, uh, and the caramel color, not that unusual uh, in a bourbon. So the whiskey wash, not a lot of overlap with the original tasting mat. Uh, another review we got from distiller.com, and uh, they talk about it the distillery being located on the north end of Chicago, 100% grain to bottle operations. So they're doing all of the stuff themselves. They, um, <clears throat> they uh, characterize it as a fruity and herbal flavor profile as a generalization. Um, they talk about in the tasting notes, sweet vanilla notes are found along with some light char, smoke, and toasted grains. Um, and, uh, he talks about, uh, millet being used as, sec as a secondary grain, and, um, while he says you may not be able to taste that, you can tell that it isn't rye or barley. And, um, again, not the 
overlap with the tasting map that I was looking for. So let's move on to the Journeyman Featherbone Bourbon Whiskey. And um, for Journeyman, the flavor map from the tasting box starts out with malted barley. It's got a spicy graphic, vanilla, a sweet graphic, caramel, rye, citrus, and wheat. Um, you know, and the wheat is part of the, uh, the uh, Koval tasting map. And I don't know if any of these people have ever been in a wheat field and actually pulled some wheat off of a stalk of wheat and chewed on it. I don't get that flavor out of any of this stuff. But anyway, let's move on to the review. So uh, from the whiskey wash on the Featherborn, Featherbone Bourbon Whiskey, uh, they talk about uh, floral tobacco and a slight hint of cola on the nose. Uh, for the palate, they talk about vanilla, tobacco, rye spice, and something the reviewer characterized as rather thin mouthfeel. Not sure what that means. And uh, moving on to the finish, quick burn with lingering tobacco notes. So... Um, Basically, they're not uh, real big fans of it. And uh, in terms of overlap with the tasting flavor map, again, not seeing it. Uh, from the distiller.com, we have another uh, review. Um, tasting notes, they talk about it being very sweet at the start. Uh, which they consider to be uncommon in a 90 proof whiskey. Uh, high level of sweetness lends to its body, which is highly oily in a syrupy way. Uh, don't get syrup or oil in it myself, but hey, maybe they can test, taste things I can. The mouth coating lends slightly towards the novice bourbon drinker and slightly gingery in the mid palate. This whiskey finishes quickly in both the mouth and the glass. Uh, with a flavor profile overall of sweet and vanilla. So, uh, again, a little bit of overlap, but really not getting uh, quite what we thought we'd find. Um, one thing interesting about the Journeyman is that it uh, comes out of Three Oaks, Michigan, which is a little closer to home for me, uh, just outside of Toledo, Ohio. And, um, but... All three of these are not too far from me, Chicago being an easy drive, uh, as well as most of Michigan. So kind of fun to find these things more local, although I typically would think of bourbon as something more in the Kentucky uh, parts of, Ohio, of uh, the United States. So it's fun. Uh, I enjoyed all of these. Um, would never turn down a uh, another sample of any of them, uh, but this whole flavor stuff uh, is really just kind of puzzling, and hopefully I'll learn more in the future. So um, moving on, let's see uh, what can we do about purchasing more of this stuff. Um, the Coval, well, that was. Um, the closest to being available to me uh, here outside of Toledo uh, with a store just across the line into Michigan in Lambertville, Michigan that uh, their website indicates stocks Coval. Uh, Few Bourbon is really um, seems to be focused more in that Chicago area with a little bit in the middle of Illinois and um, then the uh, uh, Journeyman Featherbone, uh, the closest it looks like it's available to me is going to be in Dearborn, uh, with a lot of places in Michigan either serving or stocking the Journeyman Featherbone bourbon whiskey. So, um, probably try to pick up a bottle of the Coval 
sometime in the not too distant future and uh, see how much I enjoy it on a here and there kind of basis. And um, I could tell you all to uh, stay thirsty, like the silly commercials, but then uh, I suppose you wouldn't have enjoyed your beverage. So I will say enjoy, but not too much. And uh, finally, some people have asked about uh, putting together these segments and um, specifically, what kind of music am I listening to? So for this episode, I was playing Pandora Teddy Bears Radio, a suggestion from my friend Eric Z, Zaddy Z-Man. And this playlist uh, featured songs like uh, Milky Chance Stolen Dance, MIA Paper Planes, Teddy Bears Rocket Scientists, Gorillas Feel Good Inc., Shiny Toy Guns, Major Tom, Parov Stellar, The Mojo Radio Gang, Brad Sucks, Guess Who's a Mess, Gnarls Barkley Going On, Teddy Bears, Are You Feeling It?, and much, much more. So uh, that's it for this episode. I uh, hope the extended version was interesting or useful for you. Uh, take care and enjoy talking to you all and talk to you another day. Thanks. Bye now.